good afternoon. Welcome to Sarah's One class. In our permitment class, which is last week, we discuss the origin of inspiration. Then we also define the concept of inspiration by different scholars. So this after we'll be looking at theories of inspiration. Principally, we'll be looking at four theories of inspiration. The first theory is all called the intentional theory of inspiration. The scholar behind this theory proposed the fact that the word in the scripture or in the Bible are dictated to the authors or to the writers. This simply means that God was the original author. Then God dictates to the writers. And the writers, as we discussed last week, we said the writers are human beings. Or God used human mechanical to compile the work in the Bible. So, under this theory now, the school believed that the Bible was compiled by human beings. But under God's guidance, that is, God guide them. Now, another key summation of this school of thought is that the effort of God is limited. Why the effort of man is unlimited? Because God did not dictate to them the choice of ways. God did not dictate to them the mechanical construction. God did not dictate to them the punctuation, the analysis, the historical antecedent. God did not dictate to them. Under this school. So scholars believe that with this arts of inspiration that, oh, God only dictates to them. So there is more effort to man, or the effort that man put in to the completion of it is more than the effort that God put in. So what now happened is that God spoke, man wrote. So man assumed the position of secretary. Now when you go to an office and you meet with a secretary, the secretary document every piece of information given to him or her. So that is what man does during the completion of them, but God dictates. And that's why this school of thought derived this theory that it is this traditional theory of inspiration. Then the second theory what I want us to look at is limited theory of inspiration. Limited theory, as the word limited implies, it means little effort, little effort, or there's a level that the effort put in is gauge, limited theory. And the direct opposite of devotion the traditional theory of inspiration is limited theory. The school of thought that proponent this theory believe that the effort of man is limited during the compilation of the Bible. The effort of man is limited. Why God was directly involved in the compilation of the Bible? That is what they believe. And that's why the school believe, oh. And that's why we say that it is the direct opposite of the traditional theory. Because the traditional school of thought believe that the effort of God is limited, is cut, counted. Then why the effort of man is cutless? Then the limited theory of inspiration believe that the effort of God is cutless, that you cannot weigh it, you cannot score it. But the effort of man is countable. It's countable. You can count it. That means that by this school of thought, their opinion or view is that the effort of man is 
limits or few. Then why God was the originator? God was the author. God was the one who inspired their mind, who speaks to their mind, who whispers to their mind, who tells them what to put on ground in the Bible. Then, what man did is just to listen and document. So the only effort of man put in according to this school of thought is that man only writes why God take control of their hearts or their minds in terms of the choice of words, literary expression, mechanical accuracy, imagery, and so and so forth. That God was actually involved in the compilation of the Bible. So it is direct opposite of the traditional theory. So you can easily get these two theory. Are you getting it? Then the third theory I want us to look at, which is number three, plenary verbal theory or inspiration. The word plenary means complete, means full. Why the word verba means very way or the very expression. So this school of thought believed absolutely that God is the finisher of the Bible, of the scripture. That is, God was the one who started it, who started the writing, who initiated the idea. Are you getting it? Then put everything in place that was documented in the Bible to the very end. So, the other name for the plenary verba in theory of inspiration is what we call orthodox theory of inspiration. Orthodox. Orthodox theory. So it is also called orthodox theory of inspiration. So it means that the school of thought or people that make up this school are classical thinkers. Are people that that the first church was built upon that they believe everything completely about the Bible, the message of God in the Bible, the message of Christ in the Bible. That people who call orthodox, orthodox, or orthodox theorists. Are you getting it now? So, according to this school of thought, or their view is that God prepared everything and God is responsible for everything in the Bible. So if you claim that there's no error in the Bible, the credit goes to God. If you claim that there's error in the Bible, as some scholars or theologians will say, the mistakes or the blame goes to God. Are you getting it now? So that is what the orthodox theory of inspiration believes. Then the fourth one, which is the last one we're looking at this evening, is what we call new orthodox theory of inspiration. The word new is from a Latin word, which simply means new. Just like some of us will say our parents are old school, we are new school. So it means that the very Baba theory of inspiration was an old school. And that's why I use the word classical. Are you getting it? Then 
new orthodox theory of inspiration is a new school of inspiration. Are you getting that? Now, why do we use the word orthodox? It's because these people metamorphosed or they got their origin from the orthodox, the previous one we discussed. So they deviate from that original foundation and say, no, are you getting that's what happened? So, and their belief is that man is infallible. Man is what? Infallible. I mean, that man is falling, rather. Man is what? Falling. That is what they use. That man is falling. Therefore, there is a wide gap between man and God. Or there is a wide gap between God and man. Are you getting it now? So, since man, by its nature, is fallible, fallible means weak. Are you getting it? Fallible means imperfect. When someone is not perfect. So, since man is not perfect, since man is weak, are you getting it now? Man cannot write the, write the Bible complete. So they now look at the instead of them throwing the Bible away, they now consider, okay, what will now happen is that the Bible is a product of man. Are you getting it now? The words in the Bible is a product of man. Therefore, man is in for the, the uh, man is fallible. Therefore, the Bible or the words in the Bible. The words in the Bible are fallible. So they assume that there is a mistake, or the words in the Bible are weak or not potent. Let me use the word that the words in the Bible are not potent. So they now look at they believe in God. Are you getting it now? The new orthodox believe in God. That the only way God speaks to man. Is true what we call revelation. That is the only way God ministers to man. That is the only way God speaks to man. That is the only way God inspired man is revelation. Then we'll talk about writing that the, the writers in the Bible are for the views. They are imperfect word. Are you getting it now? So that's what they believe. And they preach that in their school of thought. So in our next class, we'll be looking at canosity or canonism. Thank you.